Here I'm going to look at uh, four examples dealing with volumes of prisms and of cylinders. In this first one, notice we have a triangular prism. Now it's important to identify what type of prism it is because that's going to tell you what, what the base is. Because remember, our formula to calculate the volume of a prism is volume equals area of the base times the height. Now remember that height is the height of the prism. So I look at this again, and I know it's a triangular prism. Therefore, I'm going to need to know what is the area of that triangle. Well, I look at it, and right now I know that the hypotenuse of this triangle is 8 feet. I see that it's 45 degrees here, which means it's going to be a 45 degree angle there because I have the right angle here. Now what I can do is I can take my 8 feet, if I divide it by the square root of 2, because that's what we do to the hypotenuse to find the length of the leg means I'm going to have to multiply by root 2 over root 2. Remember, this is just equal to 1, just to make it, um, this is how we make it work out so that the denominator becomes a rational number. That's 2, and then I have 8 root 2 in the numerator, which is going to simplify to 4 root 2. I know that now that length is 4 root 2, and being it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, so is that one. So now I can find the area of the base, which is a triangle, and I already know the height is 12 feet, so I have everything I need to know to, to calculate the volume. So for my area of my base, it's a triangle, so I'm going to do 1 half times the base of the triangle, which is 4 root 2, times the height of the triangle, which is 4 root 2, and then multiply this by the height of the prism, which is 12. Now what I'm going to look at here is root 2 times root 2 is 2, and then times a half is just 1. So everything I have circled in purple is essentially gone. And now I can do 4 times 4, which is 16, and then take the 16 and multiply it by the 12. When I do this, I find out that the volume is 192, and then I look at my label, it was feet, so cubic feet. So I'd be, I would be able to find um, 192 one foot by one foot by one foot cubes inside of that prism. Now my second one, this one's a little more in depth. Um, being, uh, it snows around here in Minnesota. I'm gonna take a look at figuring out how much snow is on my driveway. Now, the problem tells me that the weight of wet snow is approximately 0.575 times the volume of the snow in cubic inches divided by 144. So we have a little formula up there to figure out the weight of the snow. And I want to know how many pounds of wet snow will, will I, Mr. Rude, shovel off my rectangular driveway that is 75 feet long and 30 feet, feet wide when it snows 4 inches. So the first thing that I'm going to look at is what does my driveway look like? Well, it tells me that it's 30 feet wide and 75 feet long. So there's essentially my driveway. 30 feet here, we have 75 feet here. And then it snows four inches. So there's four inches of snow sitting on top of my driveway. You know, it would look something like this. So this length here is 4 inches. So essentially I have a prism there. And if I want to figure out how much the snow weighs, well, notice I'm going to need to know how many cubic inches of snow is on my driveway. Well, I can figure out that because it's talking volume. Now notice it wants it in terms of cubic inches. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the 75 feet. I'm going to turn it into inches. Now to do that, I'm going to multiply by 12 inches over 1 foot, called the unit multiplier. The 12 inches over 1 foot, that's equal to 1. So then when I multiply it by 75, I'm going to have an equivalent number. Um, it's going to be a different number, but the labels are different. That's why they'll be equivalent. So my feet here and my feet here divide out. And now all I have to do is take 75 and multiply it by 12. And I find out that that's 900 inches. So my driveway, 
instead of looking at it in terms of 75 feet, I can look at it in terms of 900 inches. I'm going to do the same thing with the 30. Take 30 feet, multiply it by my unit multiplier of 12 inches over 1 foot, and I find out that my driveway is 360 inches wide. Come down here, I'm going to put 360 inches. Now I have enough information to figure out how much wet snow is sitting on top of my driveway. So I use my volume formula, area of the base. Well, my base is the 900, whoops, I'm going to go like this. 900 inches by 360 inches. Oops, just about forgot the zero in there. And then I have to multiply that by the height. Well, that was the height of the snow, which is 4 inches. And then I have to multiply that all together. So when I do that, I find out that the volume of the wet snow sitting on top of my driveway is 1,296,000. Oops, I forgot the 6 in there. Let me try this again. So 1,296,000 cubic inches of snow is sitting on top of my driveway. Now that I know the volume, now I can come back up here and notice, remember it told me that if I take that number and multiply it by 0.575 and then divide it by 144, I'm going to figure out the weight in terms of pounds on top of my driveway. So I'm going to take my 1,296,000 cubic inches, I'm going to multiply it by the 0.575 and then divide it by 12. And that's going to give me my weight in terms of pounds. Total weight is 5,175 pounds sitting on my driveway that I went and shoveled off. So you can tell me the next time you see me that I must be a pretty strong person if I were to lift it all off at once, which probably didn't happen. But you can think that way. Now my next one, now I'm looking at a, a cylinder, and I want to know how much garbage is going to fit inside of this cylindrical can. And I give you the diameter at 18.25 inches, and the height is 32 inches. So think back to finding the volume of a cylinder. Volume is equal to the area of the base times the height of the cylinder. Well, my base is a circle, so I just need to figure out the radius. So I can take that. 18.25, if I cut in half, that's going to give me my radius of 9.125. So I can take that, come over here. My area of my base is going to be pi times 9.125, which is the radius squared. And then I have to multiply that by the height of my cylinder, which is 32 inches. Now I'll take that and multiply it on my calculator. So what I've done here is I've taken the 9.125 squared it multiplied it by 32, and I ended up with 2,664.5, but then we'd have to multiply by pi. So right there would be the exact value in terms of cubic inches. Now if I wanted the approximate, then I just need to multiply that number by pi. And when I do that, I end up with 8,370.77 cubic inches. And I used the pi button on my calculator when I did that. So that would be the volume of my, my cylindrical can. And then my last one, now I have an oblique cylinder. All the other problems we looked at, they were right cylinders or right prisms. So in this one, it's an oblique one. Now remember, to find the volume of, of an oblique cylinder, or an oblique prism, it's not any different than finding the volume of a right cylinder or a right prism. Take the area of the base and multiply it by the height. Well, I look at this and my base is a, a circle again. I know the diameter is 7, therefore if I take that 7 and I cut it in half, I'm going to get the 3.5. So I know my radius is 3.5. I can take that, put that in, so I'm going to have pi times 3.5 squared, but then I need to know 
the height of my cylinder, and that height is right here. Well, I have a right triangle here where I know two of the sides. I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the third side. So I'm going to go with a squared. I'm going to call it h because it's the height of my cylinder. So I'm going to have h squared plus 7 squared equals c squared. Now I just need to solve this little equation dealing with the Pythagorean theorem, and I'm going to have the height of the cylinder. So I have h squared plus 49 equal to 625. Subtract the 49 from both. Oops. It's not 45. 49 from both sides. I find out that h squared is going to equal 500. 76. If I take the square root of both sides, I find out that my height is 24. So I can come back up here. Now I know the height of my cylinder. And then it's just a matter of multiplying everything together. So when I multiply the 3.5 squared times the 24, I end up with 294. Still need to multiply by pi. So the exact volume of my cylinder would be 294 pi centimeters cubed. And then my approximate, when I multiply that by pi, I end up with 923.63. And again, I use the pi button on my calculator, and that's cubic centimeters. So that's going to conclude my lesson dealing with the examples on volumes of cylinders and of prisms.